Hello and welcome to The Drama. I'm Peter Wilkins. Coming up, the Cox Plate Countdown. Will So You Think make it two in a row? Australia's international cricket woes and why the IRL has dashed Israel Folau's dream of being a water boy for Tonga. Our esteemed panel tonight, Craig Norenberg's from ABC Sport, former Matildas player, currently with the Brisbane Roar, Alicia Ferguson, and in Melbourne, from the Offsiders and ABC Grandstand, Jared Waitley. Well, punters across the nation are studying their form guides ahead of tomorrow's $3 million Cox Plate. It's one of the biggest events on the racing calendar, and this year it's a showdown between top trainers Bart Cummings and Gay Waterhouse. The shortest odds are for the reigning champion, so you think. It was good, did his work and no problem. He's cleaned his breakfast up and within 40 minutes, so he's uh, trouble free. Trouble free, but the Waterhouse trained more joyous is the likely challenger. Uh, she's back, she's fully mature, she's very strong, she's very focused uh, and she's got an amazing will to win. It's got a bit of the uh, bone crusher, our Waverley star feel about it. It's, uh, to use a boxing analogy, but like the rumble in the jungle. Uh, Jared Waitley, are we going to see any rope-a-dope tactics? I can feel your excitement welling. Ah, uh, yes, Wilco. Look, this has captured the imagination of the sporting public, certainly in Melbourne, to the exclusion of anything else this weekend. And, and I do think that's because the storylines are so rich. You do have the best horse in the country, and so you think the shortest price favourite in a couple of generations in a Cox Plate. So commanding is his hold on the race that some bookmakers have already settled their wages and paid out on him winning the race. And as you say, <laughs> we've got the deities of racing, Bart and Gay, squaring off. And then the emotional element as well with a jockey fulfilling the engagement of a, a late mate and Corey Brown will wear the silks of the late Stathy Katsidis when he's legged aboard shootout so it is an alluring mix I'm not sure it's quite the match race of the best horse against the best filly because there's a couple of uh, war horses in there as well but if we see the crowning of this great horse uh, I think that would be completely fulfilling. Can no. I be a little bit naughty here <laughs> Come on, Craig. and just say that, uh, and Jared might disagree with me here, that this is the race that the Spring Carnival needed because, to be frank, I think the rest of Australia hasn't quite caught the racing bug that the Spring Carnival has in Melbourne. This is a race that it needed, and as Jared was just going through, there are so many elements uh, to this race. Mm. There, there, of course, is the, the thriller in Manila, the, uh, the kind of boxing <laughs> analogy that we can use there. There's also the, the sad story of the, the jockey who should have been there, there for this weekend, and there's also the battle between... the the, the trainers. This is the race that I would imaginely, imagine quietly racing officials would be saying, thank goodness we had this kind of match, match, match race between these two. And, and I think Gay Waterhouse is helping also. She's kind of talking up things and saying, yeah. look, even, even though she, it's paying $7.10 Get on it now. Seven dollars ten. You know, it's probably worth ten bucks to throw on it, rather than a dollar forty-five, which which you could probably throw throw away. This is the race they needed, and I just have. To, and I think Victorians forget that the rest of Australia. Okay, you know, we might think, oh, that's good, and we'll see. Oh, they won. And we'll watch. We'll watch maybe the Group One, a couple of Group One races, and then the feature race. But until this comes along, I don't think we cared. Just uh, back to Jared for a moment. Uh, Bart Cummings is expecting a roughhouse race, which uh, I guess would be at the top of his mind, given the quality of his horse. Uh, I mean, is there a knockout chance, or is it going to be so you think's race? What's the, the Jared Whateley tip? Look, if there's a knockout horse, I think it's the war horse, Zipping, who's running in his fourth Cox Plate, and he sort of fits the recent bill of uh, attritional events in a Cox Plate. So I personally think he'll run second, but I think we'll see the crowning of this champion horse. We'll leave Mooney Valley tomorrow night, and we'll have seen a horse that has had only 10 career starts win two Cox Plates. He'll be a <laughs> commanding favourite for the Melbourne Cup the 150th edition for the most successful trainer in its time. And it may well be Bart's last Melbourne Cup for all manner of reasons as a trainer. And I reckon he'll be about a $3.50 favourite for the Cup when he leaves tomorrow night. And we'll all have that thrill as we head toward Flemington. Yes, it's going to be terrific. Now, at this stage of year, lots of people get excited in racing. Alicia, I know a lot of the uh, Matildas, with all their studying and football, they wouldn't be punters, but uh, you'd get the verve, wouldn't you? You'd get the feeling around Melbourne Cup time and particularly for a big race like this? Yeah, look, coming from Queensland, the, the Sunshine State, I guess, there's still the racing bug up there, but 
for us, it's probably more about getting doled up and getting the champagne out and, you know, the people watching at the races and any good excuse to, to get a frock on and get the makeup and hair done is, is a good one for me. Can I say to all the ladies who are in Melbourne, perhaps getting ready for fashions in, in the field and going to the races this weekend, don't have too much to drink. Don't try and walk out the car park on the way out in your high heels and you get a shoe stuck on. No, now, Craig, it's have not, you, have not, you not seen? Look. There's a new invention there, little slippers that the girls can actually put in their bag so no one has to carry the high heels Craig, over the shoulder. I introduced Craig Norenberg, the new head of ABC Radio, support, 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 sport and the fashion sport police supporter. as well. Yeah, he needs support after that. Now, uh, on a more poignant note, uh, Gerard did mention it, it will be an emotional Cox Plate ride for Corey Brown. He's the jockey on shootout, replacing Starthy Katsidis, who died earlier this week. Brown will be wearing his mate's riding silks in tomorrow's race, and he paid tribute to Katsidis today. Yeah, it's, um, it's not good circumstances, but um, it's business for me once I go onto the track. Um, like I've stated, I know I've got sort of the world on my shoulders and Stathy will be there with me, but I've got a job to do and I'll go out and do it. Now, Jared Waitley, there's a bit of the media puzzle in this. This is a very poignant introduction to the race as well. Uh, you're exasperated, though, aren't you? You, you continually get a feel for uh, moments like this. Uh, could people have done any more? Yeah, and I think there's a, a few people asking themselves this. I, I mean, this uh, the circumstances are obviously tragic. Uh, Starthy was found dead in his home in Queensland on Tuesday morning, and it, uh, the racing fraternity essentially found out when they were wrapping up formalities uh, of breakfast with the best at Mooney Valley. So everybody had had their say. They'd spoken about shootout and what was lying ahead. But, yeah, Katsidis had had a, a troubled history with drugs and alcohol, and uh, it's certainly in terms of what his family has said, alcohol has played a role here. Whether it's a broader debate on drugs in sport, I think people have leapt to perhaps the wrong conclusions. But we'll find out more from uh, further medical examinations, yeah. But when a, a, a young man who's so talented in his sport dies too young, I think it causes a lot of people pause. Uh, Alicia Ferguson, this is a tragedy. You've been involved in uh, sport for, for many a long year. Sometimes you just can't tell, can you, when uh, some of your fellow sporting peers are, are troubled. They, they, they put, the, put the mask on. Yeah, I guess as you know, professional athletes, they're reasonably highly strung and you, you're walking a fine line between perfection all the time and that's what you're always going for. And while you can put on a strong face and a strong front, that doesn't mean that that's what's going on inside. And such a tragic event for a great young jockey to, to die at the age of 31, you know. Yeah, and it's a tough game being a jockey as well. People forget how hard they train, how they have to diet mm -hmm. and how they've got to keep their weight. It's t even tougher than being a boxer and maybe uh, it, it, it has less to do with his, his lifestyle and, and more to do perhaps with the kind of person he was. Well, Australia's cricket woes continued this week with India winning the latest one-day international by five wickets in uh, somewhat extraordinary circumstances given mm. uh, the runs they had to chase. What does this mean for the Ashes campaign for Australia? Legendary fast bowler Dennis Lilly is confident Australia will regain the trophy from England because Ricky Potting's team has the stronger attack. Craig, uh, you still get this overburdening uh, on the shoulder that you, you think that it's coming down on Australia a little bit, don't yeah, you? you? Remember you the days, you... uh, and it really was only five years ago that we were number one in the world and we were virtually unbeatable and we had a, a, great, uh, a great run of test wins and everyone was saying this could go on forever. Well, you fast forward to now and seemingly we're on the back foot. I wouldn't read too much into the one-day games. A couple of players have come back and our bowling attack... Uh, really wasn't top notch against India, as you can tell. Still, when they, you expect when they got them to defend two hundred and eighty nine or whatever it, is. it was. And, and you probably Six also got to ask the question: How worried are we about the one day series at the moment? Even though we've got a World Cup coming up next year, but I think a lot of people's minds are on the Ashes. And I think if if the team can't get get its act together for this Ashes series, because there's so much on the line, we have to, actually have to win the Ashes back. We don't, like last time, just have to draw to win them back. We actually have to win. So they're going to go for it. They're going to press the go button. Ricky Ponting, there were questions being asked about his captaincy, um, not least of which by Shane Warne in his, in his 
tweeting, and it was odd that they didn't kind of sit down and talk. And this is probably something. Although he time. since defended himself, they'd of SMS course. each other, and uh, yeah, look, I've got a problem with you. I'm going to SMS you, and we'll sort it that way. Maybe yeah. in the old days, maybe they used to have a beer, so maybe there's something to be said for actually face to face like that. But the yeah. Ashes series, and you can slowly start. Actually, I'll give a plug. This. The ABC's cricket magazine is out now. It is edited by the uh, the veritable Jim Maxwell. There you go, Jim. I gave it a plug for you. So it's in all good bookstores and news agencies now. So get it. Uh, fantastic. Read. I just had to get that a little plug. <laughs> no, but I think right. you can actually You're start right. to feel that the Ashes series is on its way. Sri Lanka's in town. That'll be kind of the uh, the entree. And then the, the main event later in, in November when, uh, when England hit town. I think we'll beat them. Oh, it's going to be close. Yes, uh, I think uh, Sri Lanka have lost a few wickets against Queensland in their first tour match. But uh, that aside, Alicia, uh, the, the criticism on uh, Ricky Ponting, considering his esteemed record, a winning percentage of about 64%. He's been there. He's one of the greatest cricketers ever. Uh, do you feel as a sports person that it's, it's a little bit unfair and showing a, some, a lack of respect? Yeah, look, I, I think he's getting some tough criticism out there. And for... A captain that's been so successful and has that experience behind him to really play under pressure when times are tough, you know. Like Craig said, it's only been the last five years that things have dropped off a little bit and I don't think you can start pointing fingers at just one person, you know. Always good to ask the question and maybe someone might be better to step into that role, but I don't think Ricky's done just yet. I'm going to drop Ricky's name. Ricky once said to me after I'd done an interview with him, we were talking about captaincy, that, that exact that question. It was kind of off the record, but he wouldn't mind me saying this, that he said he thinks the Australian, being the Australian cricket captain is the toughest sporting job in Australia because it's not like the coach. If you're a football coach, you set the team, you pick the team, but the Australian mm. cricket captain has a lot to say when he's out on the field. He's got to set the field. And mm. if, the, if the game changes mid-flow, yeah. he's the one who's got to pull some guys out of the slips maybe, move them to the outfield and do that. And so it, it, he would be under enormous pressure. Yeah, and there's so much more attention these days mm. too. You get 45 replays, you know, when a captain's <laughs> um, got a, a dud deal yeah. and when he's uh, got a good one. It's the, the introspection or the, and the focus on the game, so much more. On our way to uh, Jared. Why don't we have a look at a, a couple of uh, bold moments from the Australian team in the, in the one-day match from Cameron White. An extraordinary oh, innings, six, really. Six, he just plundered the bowling, hitting some well, flick sixes, really, off the hips. And uh, Michael Clark was out the other end. He made a, a beautiful 102. And then I guess there's a bit of a letdown not to be able to defend that total. But, Gerald, I'm going to ask you the, the pertinent question, given the bowling couldn't do it here. Can the bowling do it in the Ashes? Is the attack good enough? It's got plenty of depth, it seems, but uh, they, they seem to be in the, the sort of disarray with injury and, and whatever. Yeah, I think this is where you get that combination of bad luck and bad management, which tends to bring you undone. Look, my take on the one day is, is it just shows how volatile things are in Australian cricket at the moment, that a high-scoring one day in India would suddenly vault Cameron White to the front of selection discussions. Sure, he made his 89 off 49, but that bears no relation to the Ashes series. No. The trouble for Australian cricket is this. They've had the chance to regenerate and they haven't. And while they haven't, they've slipped. And they've got a raft of issues